I had originally planned around this time to be releasing a new movie review about the new Mulan remake, but obviously, it's not gonna happen, and my whole schedule's a tad out of whack. But even still, the date of this video coming out is April 6th, 2020. So, in exactly two days, we are to be two years away from the official sequel of the mind-blowing Sony Pictures animation production, Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse. Yes, I don't actually know how well known this is across the general public, but a new Spider-Verse is absolutely coming. With the original releasing back in 2018 with a 90 million dollar budget which it soon turned into 375.5 million dollars, becoming Sony Pictures highest grossing film domestically. But forgetting the actual production numbers, looking over to the critical response of the film and really this sequel is a no-brainer, with this film being universally adored from every single angle, with reviewers labelling it as some of the best of the best and gaining the attention from relevant celebrities who were similarly in awe, and as for the fans, well, I think it was pretty clear what their opinions were. This film was hailed as an all-out masterpiece, filled to the brim with spidery fan service from multiple dimensions, alongside an art style unlike anything seen in any other movie ever. Truly an artistic piece of passion, rather than the generic shield that many were complaining over when it comes to the general superhero genre. And to create something so refreshing with a character that has already been booted several, several times over in the past, only made the successes of this film even more impressive. The only additive bonus to add on top of all of these successes was the concept of the premise allowing for further expansions into the nerdy world. Which brings us to today, well actually five months and a week ago today, November 1st 2019. Gosh that was really five months ago? And although there was no official trailer or any real solid footage to grip onto, the official Spider-Man Into the Spider-Verse Twitter account announced that a sequel was indeed being produced, ready and set for an April 8th 2022 release. Now I've done some digging through the Twitter account and unfortunately there's not much else within it discussing the distant sequel as it's mostly just your normal branded Twitter account, though I can't say I don't enjoy it anyway. <laughs> That's actually pretty good. But even still, there are a few small changes as to what is left in store for us with the burgeoning idea of a Spider-Verse sequel. Starting off, we'll go with the only piece of new imagery we have to go on, the teaser animated logo. Is that the best thing to call it? An animated wallpaper? Can I make this an animated background image on my desktop? Regardless, it's pretty clear what this is visually meant to represent. With the concept of Into the Spider-Verse all being about the mashup of several Spider-Man dimensions coming together in some massive conglomerate, each mashing style is clearly meant to reflect some unique dimension from each Spider-Man character. And it was pretty clearly shown right in the opening of the first film, with the logos for each company even being fragmented in and out from other designs. Examples like the Columbia Pictures logo simply being all different past logos all at once mashed up with some artistic liberties with that graffiti theming for the actual film. But obviously in a place like this, this is the perfect hiding spot for at least one new dimension to be teased up front. And there was certainly more than one that showed up. Now, I'm not much of a comic book fan, and I don't know all of the Spider-Man comics. Even still, I'm gonna try my best to dip into the massive Spider-Verse lore to cherry pick some likely future choices of Spider-Men in the sequel film, as well as some future story beats and expansions the film could take on. From evidence of what's been mentioned in the past, what other theorists have suggested online, and of course, this footage right here and a little bit of intuition. Though since this will mostly all be speculative, if you have a stronger grasp of the Spider-Man world, then I would love to see your opinions. I'm likely to make a follow-up video to this once some kind of news on it drops anyway, and you may very well get featured as the discussion continues further. Anyway, into the nitty gritty frame by frame work. So the easiest one right up front is of course Miles Morales' Spider-Man, literally the same design he spray painted onto his own Spider-Man costume back in the first film, with a few colour variations for that glitchy transition effect though there is this one that stands out with a yellow backing that some believe to be attached to the 1990s animated Spider-Man series. It might just be a transition though. Up next we have this inverted colour palette which while is still the same drip pattern, many fans do believe this is at least a nod to Mr. Negative, one of Spider-Man's many iconic villains. We then get a flash of this neon design, clearly a little more futuristic in design, and who better fits the bill than Spider-Man 2099 himself? Already a clearly established character and integral to the sequel plot, if his new device is any indication. And having it early in the lineup here makes it feel like they're easing us into the new reveals. 
Is this a logo? It gets two frames, one with a slightly different background change. Has some strong mid-transition vibes though. Anyone recognize that background texture from anywhere other than Spider-Gwen? Straight after that, we have this softened pink and red look. Funnily enough, not included in the logo compilation one Reddit user picked out. Turns out there's more than 15 Spider-Men to pop up, potentially. The only theory I've seen for this is that it belongs to Cindy Moon, but I'm pretty sure that's wrong and suited to another logo that we'll see later on. As for this one, who knows? From another angle, it would make sense for someone like Jessica Drew, Spider-Woman, to make an appearance here as a spin-off Spider-Gwen film is thought to be in the work centralizing on other female characters. And this film could very well be that bridge to that spin-off. But who else could fit the bill here? This one? That one? I can see how Cindy's palettes line up closer. Maybe she gets two logos. Also hey, if you're liking this speculation video so far, then do go ahead and subscribe. This could be the start of a new series accidentally, just kind of going over future potential ideas that can come to fruition with future films, but we'll see where that goes. Either way, it would help me out if you do subscribe, and I can tell when you're not watching, I know the statistics. Time for something more concrete. This one is all confirmed as being from the 1970s Japanese rendition of Spider-Man. Though visually only having thinner eyes in their design, their origin story has them gaining powers through an alien blood transfusion. They're also very much a mech buff, having controls of the Leopardon. Uh, I, my British brain originally read that as Leopardon. That's not correct. Leopardon! <laughs> Change the Leopardon! Either way, it is a giant battle robot that's also an alien spaceship called the Marveler. And it's all used with its handy dandy bracelet. This is very much a Penny 2.0 take. Moving on, we then have this simple design, again stumping the masses. Only suggestions I've heard of is with Scarlet Spider and Kane Parker specifically. I don't really see it, especially with the yellow on show, but maybe any Spider-Man that looks Spider-Man-y fits the bill. Spider-Girl, for example, Mayday Parker, Peter Parker's future daughter, or just Peter himself. His logo's not too distinguishable here either, so I don't know. Actually, if it is Peter B. Parker, then that would line up quite nicely. With the next two logos being the characters we know already. Penny Parker with the anime hairlines to the side, and Spider-Ham with his literal face in the logo. See those eyes? It's, it's literally the pig face. Following up, we then have this grey metallic looking design, which I had one of the hardest times tracking down some info for online. But there is an iron Spider-Man phase that could hook up to it. Otherwise, everyone's stumped. This one here is a lot of that old style comic texturing leading into the idea of it being that 60s Spider-Man. And with that post credit scene, he can easily gain a bigger role. Here's a random green background. It's probably nothing, right? And then that metallic grayish logo again. What is this, a hint to their bigger role or something? Is it a hint of a new Spider-Man collaboration with Miles' graffiti contributing to it too? Or an evil Spider-Man taking over? Or, or is it just more glitchiness? We then have a cartoony bash design, but didn't we already have Spider-Ham already? Is there another Spider-Man goofball to play with? Or does the scrapbook design of this pink logo hint to someone else? Pro tip, don't Google pink Spider-Man. Maybe it is two logos per character. Okay, moving on, I caught this logo that doesn't look like anything I've seen talked about online yet. It could be another transitional one since it's got that more comic texturing on it, but if not, it certainly leads to some of the more edgier characters in concept. Maybe here I'd see Kane Parker. Otherwise, it's probably nothing. Then we get Penny's logo again, followed closely by this spiny one. My first thought was to some sort of tarantula design, which again leads to Kane Parker apparently, but another idea was that this was hinting at a Spider-Man Aunt May, which is a thing that has existed occasionally with Spider-Man. Moving on, we have this dark, scratchy look that people dub as being the superior Spider-Man. A darkened timeline whereby Otto Octavius tricked Peter and overtook his body, leading to him choosing to become a superior Spider-Man than Parker ever was. If this is correct, then having a second Octavius would certainly make the sequel extra interesting, no matter what side they pick. Here's another one I haven't seen mentioned at all. Am I missing a massive archive discussion somewhere? Thinner and more hands-free in design. I can't find someone who fits the bill. Regardless, BAM! Here's Spider-Gwen loud and clear, alongside a pretty stark design. While paper clips here may suggest realism with live action, which we'll get to that later, the paper baggy background seems to link pretty clearly with the bombastic Bagman suit from a Spider-Man that borrowed from the Fantastic Four to hide his identity for a moment in time. 
there it is again, followed by 60s and a newcomer, which people are pretty confident as being Ben Riley, a clone of Peter Parker with all the same powers. And then a purple backing which leads some to 2099 with that colour palette and others to Peter B. Parker. Honestly, to me, it all just kind of merges into one. I guess that's the theme of the franchise. Moving on, here's a dash of pink. It's the same logo design, so it's probably a transition, but maybe palettes matter more. Here's another, and that damn grey one again. Here we go, another stark choice, the most notable feature, of course, being the crescent moon up top, hinting towards Silk or Cindy Moon. Presumably a character to join Spider-Gwen in her spin-off. Here's something new, though it looks a lot like that one logo from before to me. Only suggestions I've seen for this one are Spider-Girl and Noir having seen colour. I haven't got a clue what to believe. Every idea merges with every other idea. And then one last one, if you count it as such, a brief colour swap on the base design as a slightly faded than normal. My colourblind eyes wanted to say it was slightly gilded, but it's not, so excuse me there, it's probably just a transition. All of those listed comes to a maximum of 26 logo designs, though several were probably nothing, and a total of 20 Spider-Men and women discussed, which, even if not the real number, is an awful lot of juggling to handle. And that doesn't even cover all the other Spider characters to play around with. Plus, even characters like Noir, I kinda struggled to find a slot for. Sure, we had that one logo, but there's no obvious black and white dimension logo. And even if it was that every character gets two logos, that's still 13 Spider-Men, which is a lot. But no, clearly with all of these characters to handle, this sequel film is going to have a rough time bringing it all together into a mere two hours. So let's dig into just how the Spider-Verse story can expand in a way that makes it somewhat approachable. The only real news we have about the actual story is that it is slated to focus a little more on the relationship between Miles Morales and Gwen Stacy, as it was an element of the first film that then got cut away for a more focused relationship on Peter P. Parker. The film is also confirmed to feature the 70s Japanese Spider-Man as well. So what new directions can it go in? Well, looking at the post credit scene of the original, it seems pretty clear that 2099 is involved with a new dimension hopping device, allowing him to recruit other Spider-Men from different dimensions, starting with the classic 60s Spider-Man if this logo is to be believed. And though it's pretty clear already, Spider-Verse isn't afraid to hop onto different pockets of time as well to sue each dimension best. Now one of the first hurdles Spider-Verse will need to introduce is giving us something refreshing in its concept. We've seen universes mash together into Miles' world already, so what's the next boundary to break. Well, to me, it seems pretty clear that an unopened avenue exists with exploring the dimensions outside of Miles' reality. We've seen glimpses of each spider's own dimension, but having a similar villain hopping from dimension to dimension allows us to really take in the alternate realities introduced for everyone except Miles, and gives us a healthy excuse to bring in more spider people along the way. Plus, imagine the reactions of Spider Noir's people seeing these colourful Spider-Men running through their town or Spider-Ham looking at all those delicious humans. It opens up a lot of jokes and story beats and seems like a no-brainer for a sequel to explore. Though a complication that would arise from that is leaving behind characters from Miles' reality like his parents. But then that comes to our next and most obvious hurdle to overcome. How on earth do you balance the screen time behind all of these characters? The first film handled this with a kind of tier system of importance, with Ham, Penny and Noir acting as a mashup gang rather than single characters to explore individually for far too much time. Perhaps we'll see more of that here, with Gwen and Miles being up front, Peter B. Parker existing somewhere, the same trio as the close backing, and then extra spiders as background filler over everything else. Perhaps their moments come in both those main action scenes as well as their brief times in their dimensions before moving on elsewhere. That way we get the jokey interactions between characters enough to say that we love them and their developments and then leave them to do fairly little as part of the backup team for the rest of the film. It's a fine line to tread, but much more likely than some sort of four hour runtime. As for those kind of interactions, there's obviously so much room to explore. If Mayday Parker gets introduced with Spider-Girl, then meeting her own alternate dad could be a thing. Superior Otto going against his own alter egos or being split between teams of being the Spider-Man or being Octavius. The Japanese Spider-Man could be assisting Penny's mecha tech since he has his own Lepidon. And the girls can obviously team up to foreshadow their standalone film. Really, it's probably those kind of moments that I'm looking forward to more than the general main plot, but I guess that's kind of just how I am. 
Either way, from a structural perspective, the most expected story beats I can see being a reality, based off of pure speculation so far, is the idea that 2099 is recruiting spiders, Gwen and Miles are interacting more, the gang reunites, runs through several dimensions building the spider team up, and with everyone established as much or as little as required, everyone gets their big moment right at the end with some fantastical battle, potentially even across several dimensions mid-battle. Split up between each spider fight, or progressively on the move. What would be a really fascinating progression though would be to have actual spiders die in the story to make clear that they are somewhat expendable and not all invincible. But we'll see. We've already seen one real death, so who knows where it could go from there. Other villains that have since been mentioned, albeit only in theories, is Mr. Negative and any survivors of the Sinister Six. There's also murmurs of carnage and venom, and really there's just a lot of villain opportunities It's Spider-Man. And having a large collection of villains again would again line up with so many spiders, but at the same time, would clutter the cast list even more so. So who knows how all of that would be balanced out. Hiring villains from each spider's dimension at least seems followable to me, be it all Doc Ox or others too. And when it comes to other crazy fan service ideas like bringing in Tom Holland, as both parties seem to want to be involved alongside the other live action stars Andrew Garfield and Tobey Maguire, Realistically, I can only see it as a cameo appearance for a single scene, but certainly doesn't mean I'm against the whole idea. Maybe Tom Holland could have a bigger role if deals allow it, and it doesn't clash too harshly with the art style. The only other smallest piece of info there really is to cherry pick out of Into the Spider-Verse 2 is the apparent idea that there may be a small time jump of two years after the original film. What does that leave open for storytelling? Well, not much, and that's probably the point. Miles would have more confidence in his role and potentially more villains to go against. Peter B. Parker would have a one and a half ish year old child and may be conflicted with parenthood and superheroism, which seeing his daughter from another reality in the future may calm or worsen it more. Noir may have mastered color, I'm not sure about that. 2099 would be well underway with his recruiting plan and if this rift meetup is soon after the last events, then hopping over with Gwen may be a well established thing. Regardless, we've still got a two year long wait of our own to get through first, before finding out the reality for ourselves. With all these logos in that 10 second teaser, there's room for all sorts of spiders I haven't heard of that maybe you can help pinpoint. The concept of Spider-Verse clearly has plenty of room to expand in, and with it easily being one of the top movies of the decade and a real artistic masterpiece on all other fronts, I have no doubt that this film will magnificently blow us all away with its quality, even against the undoubtable trials of balancing all of these elements together. I cannot wait for the distant future of April 8th, 2022. Who knows where we'll all be by then. Shout at me when a new trailer or info pops up regarding this film over on my Twitter account or something. Otherwise, for now, my name's been Daz, you didn't really care, and I'll see you in a bit. <sighs> I didn't even get to talk about how good the original film was. I guess everyone kind of knows it. It was almost going to be like a This Movie Is Coming Back episode, but I guess this is a new speculation series. Let's spec? That sounds weird. I'll work on it. We'll see.